my pleasure to have this opportunity to return once more to Brazil and celebrate Graphene. Uh, Marcos showed you statistics, but it's not me, it's the field. Because I've been working for a long time and everybody's interested in Graphene, so we get lots of citations. But the field is very interesting to us, and uh, I can see that we have many people who have come to the conference. And we hope that uh, you all learn a lot and benefit from having come and made the effort to participate. The field is moving very rapidly. There are many new things happening daily. And uh, what we will hear, to hear today is the recent evolution. We have people from all over the world who have been leaders in the field, and they'll tell us about their latest results. And at the end, we'll think about what we learned at the conference. Because it's always good at the very last day to deliberate what has changed in our lives. We've been working in this field. What have we learned? So uh, this is, with this in mind, I'm going to start my talk. And, uh, Marcos asked me to start not speaking so much about graphene, but to put graphene in the context of science today. So uh, I headed up a, a study in the United States on the subject of dense matter physics and what are the challenges right now. And you will see we have six challenges. Maybe not important to read every detail of the six challenges, but one of them is directly connected with graphene and the conference. So uh, this is an independent assessment before we ever had the Nobel Prize or anything. This report came out about two years ago. And uh, so what we're doing here with graphene puts into the present picture of challenges and you will see as we go through the conference that uh, we know a lot already in this field, but there's much more that we don't know. And it's uh, useful to identify uh, what it is that would be nice to know and where the opportunities might lie and uh, how we can advance the field until the next conference will be held someplace. I'm sure this is the last conference on graphic. Okay, so well, what we see here is uh, six different uh, topics, and the first one is the complex phenomena. That what, it, what this basically says, the interaction between electrons and each other, or the interaction between electrons and phonons, are, is a, cheap, uh, a, a big, big challenge. We understand the independent particles, but the interactions are still a challenge to us. And they, they govern almost everything that we do in condensed matter physics. The second uh, one is a challenge uh, of society. Uh, and it has to do with what? It has to do with what uh, we can do in our field to help civilization. We, we can see in the next 50 years or so, we have to make a transition to a uh, sustainable economy in the energy and uh, our area certainly plays an important role in that, in that uh, deliberation. And right now, we don't have a you know, lot of uh, uh, different applications for energy, but that's a challenge as, to us to find. So I can give that number two. Uh, the physics of life, well, I'm not sure exactly where, where gravity fits in there, but uh, 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 we have biological applications on the horizon. That's a new field about to start. We don't have much yet, but it, it, this promise that that will happen. What happens far from equilibrium? Many of the processes that we'll be describing at this conference actually occur far from equilibrium. Um, we know that in the most equilibrium states, we have, uh, say, ribbons with, uh, with edges but we have to stabilize those edges, and, and, that, and much of the stabilization is not out of the equilibrium. The red one is what the conference is about. It's about the nanoworld 
and graphene has played a major role in the man world. We have a material that's new, interesting, many new properties, and it's only one atomic layer thick. So that's the real man world. You can't get much thinner than one atomic layer. Uh, finally, what is the effect of what we're doing here on the information revolution? Uh, we've seen uh, other aspects. Uh, we have the silicon revolution. But uh, there are aspects that of, of uh, the silicon revolution maybe that are converging, coming to a close, and maybe graphene can play some role in the future of uh, uh, extending the uh, information technology beyond what we have now. So, uh, in my talk today, I'm uh, addressing sort of a historical perspective. Uh, graphene really started a long time ago, but it didn't start. And the latest uh, development is the realization of an idea that we had more than 50 years ago, more than 60 years ago, in fact. So I'll start there, and then I'll talk about some of the other aspects that I've been involved in over these 50 years, where we made successively uh, new discoveries that have illuminated aspects of graphene. So we have uh, single layers that can be made by interpolation, full of rings, nanotubes, graphene, and what's next. So that's kind of the agenda of this whole conference, and we'll have contributions almost all to the graphene, but some background will come in this opening talk. So this is me back uh, 50 years ago. Uh, the picture taken of me around 1960, maybe 59, actually. And I was working in superconductivity when the picture was taken. But right after this picture, I had to switch fields. And what I switched into was carbon. So that was my transition point. So a long, long, long time ago. And why did I switch? Well, well, one thing, I had to switch to something because I was told I couldn't work in superconductivity. But I had some choices where to go. And uh, um, the carbon field attracted me because it was so different from everything else. The carbon field has become interesting and important because it has a linear inverse escape. We knew that when I started, and that was exactly the factor that, that attracted me. So um, I started working on magneto optics, and mm -hmm. I learned the technique in a few months. And everybody was doing semiconductors, and the semiconductors all had similar dispersion relations. And people were trying to find out how magneto optics could teach us about uh, dispersion relations for electrons and interaction with phonons. We didn't have too much with interaction with phonons yet in 1960. But that, that was what, what things were about. But uh, at that time, there was some work. Uh, one thing was the linear E versus K. And that goes back to Wallace in 1947. And this was well known at the time we started. But we didn't have the materials. We just had the idea that there was such a thing as graphene that had a single layer. <coughs> if you could ever make it, we didn't think that that could happen. But if you could ever make it, it would be something interesting 